Okay, uh, there's my bio. Hopefully everyone's familiar with that. I'm an architect, a historian, an author. I've written a number of books and a lifelong Louisvillian. So today we're going to be talking about Louisville. Uh, Lincoln slept here. Presidential, presidential visits to Louisville. I want to credit these folks here uh, as we begin for uh, giving me most of the information that I'll be presenting today. Um, I did not do all the research myself. The, I credit these folks to have assisted me on it. So here's the United States in 1778. And uh, back then, we were all Virginians. Uh, Kentucky did not become a state until 1792. And of course, Louisville was founded here at the Falls of the Ohio. The first uh, president that I want to uh, highlight is uh, George Washington, the first president. We do have a connection of him here. His uh, niece, great-great-niece, uh, Margaret Wright Paget, uh, lived here. And um, the Paget House is located down on the waterfront along River Road at Frankfurt Avenue area. And um, let me see if I can help you get into the door there. And uh, if you see in the upper uh, left-hand corner, that's what that Paget House looked like a few years ago. And then just recently, we restored it, and you see what it looks like there in the uh, center of the uh, photograph. Absolutely. But anyways, the Margaret Wright Paget was a de descendant of uh, George Washington. Uh, Thomas Jefferson uh, was uh, governor of Virginia when Kentucky uh, was formed and uh, Louisville was, was uh, named back in 1780. Uh, he was uh, governor of Virginia, Thomas Jefferson was. He was good friends with George Rogers Clark. They were both born in the same county in Virginia. And I have a feeling that Thomas Jefferson influenced the name of our city. I think perhaps that Jefferson told George Rogers Clark to name it for King Louis XVI due to King Louis's um, uh, support of the American colonies during the American Revolution. And um, so however you pronounce his name, King Louis, is how you pronounce our name, Louisville. That's always been a source of debate as to how you pronounce our name. But I think that's one reason why we're named uh, Louisville is because of Thomas Jefferson, who was minister to France during the American Revolution. Also, Thomas Jefferson uh, approved of the uh, Lewis and Clark expedition to the Northwest. Um, both Meriwether Lewis and William Clark met here in Louisville in 1803. They departed from Louisville, went to St. Louis, then they went on their Northwest expedition, and they came back to Louisville in 1806. So the Lewis and Clark expedition started here and ended here, no matter what St. Louis did with that gateway arch that they built. Um, they both met here and ended here. Again, via Thomas Jefferson. We have other Jefferson rep, um, representatives here uh, locally. In the upper left-hand corner, there's a branch bank at Preston and Eastern Parkway which is designed in the image of Monticello, which was Thomas Jefferson's home. We have a statue of uh, Thomas Jefferson down at our courthouse. Uh, Farmington, in the upper right-hand corner, is supposedly influenced by the design principles of Thomas Jefferson. And there are other similar homes that Jefferson designed in Virginia that resemble Farmington, so I can see that connection. In the lower left-hand corner, that's the University of Louisville Administration Building, and it's designed in the image of the Rotunda Building at the University of Virginia that uh, Thomas Jefferson designed. The little um, street map there in the lower right-hand corner, that's of Jeffersonville, Indiana, across the river from Louisville. And Thomas Jefferson did a concept for the design of Jeffersonville, he patterned it on Savannah, Georgia, with parks in the center of the uh, intersections there. Unfortunately, that was never built or implemented, but Thomas Jefferson was connected to Jeffersonville, Indiana, 
And in the lower right hand corner is a statue of Jefferson that is over in Jeffersonville in front of their old Carnegie Library there. So a lot of connections to Thomas Jefferson here in Jefferson County. This is the United States in 1819. You can see uh, the uh, country has already expanded over to the uh, uh, Pacific Ocean due to the uh, Louisiana Purchase back in the early 1800s that Jefferson helped negotiate. So the uh, first president to actually come to Louisville was James Monroe in uh, June of 1819. And he was accompanied by Andrew Jackson uh, in, also on that same trip. So they uh, tri uh, came from, uh, they were going from Washington, D.C. to uh, uh, Jackson's home there in the Hermitage near Nashville, Tennessee. Um, here's a little description of their journey when they came here in 1819. Uh, they visited Locust Grove. They also visited uh, Soldier's Retreat off Hurstburn Parkway. And so they were very well celebrated when they came here. So James Monroe was the first president to visit Louisville. Andrew Jackson, of course, would later become president a few years later. There is uh, Locust Grove, and then we began a, a discussion when Andrew Jackson was there in 1824. I think Andrew Jackson really enjoyed the hospitality of Locust Grove because he kept coming back to it on several occasions. So um, when uh, James Monroe and Andrew Jackson ventured to, uh, uh, to uh, Nashville, they more than likely came down the Ohio River to the Cumberland River and then over into Nashville area. The waterways were the interstates back in those days, long before railroads or obviously interstates. But the waterways were the easiest way to get around the country, and Louisville was well positioned for that. Now, of course, the uh, most famous president connected to Louisville is Zachary Taylor. Unfortunately, his presidency was very short-lived, just one year. But he is most well known for, the, um, for his military career, primarily the uh, Mexican War between 1846 and 1848. And this still is controversial today, some 174 years later. Uh, the reason for that is the U.S. Army back in those days was a defensive army. They were only to de defend the United States, not to be an offensive military army. And so when he crossed the uh, uh, Rio Grande into Mexico, uh, Taylor was basically invading Mexico, going after Santa Ana. And of course, when he defeated uh, Santa Ana's army in Mexico, the United States got the uh, southwest portion of the um, United States, then Arizona, Southern California, New Mexico, that whole area. And so again, that's very controversial even to this day and has reverberations into our immigration policies even today. But uh, Zachary Teller was behind, led all of that and still is remembered for all that today. There is a Zachary Teller's house, Springfield, which is off of a Blank and Baker Park, Blank and Baker Lane, off Brownsboro Road, over in the St. Matthews area. That's what it looks like on the interior. Uh, Dr. William Gist currently owns that house, and he's done most of the renovations to it. Believe you me, it did not look like this when Zachary Teller lived there. And for what it's worth, Teller really didn't live much in Louisville. He was on his military campaigns most of the time, so that's one reason why he's not so much remembered here in Louisville. Now, his wife, Margaret, the First Lady of the United States, did live at this house and bore several of her children at this location. Um, in the upper left-hand corner is the uh, devastation to that house during the April 3rd, 1974 tornado. In fact, just, what, uh, 50 years ago that that happened. The uh, Courier-Journal cartoonist Hugh Haney owned the house at that time 
and fortunately he had the financial wherewithal to save the house and get it rebuilt. This is a Zachary Taylor's uh, cemetery there on Brownsboro Road, the, the National Cemetery. He and Margaret are interred there in the uh, mausoleum at Zachary Taylor National Cemetery. And some of you may remember back in the early 1990s, uh, they exhumed his body to uh, examine it to see whether or not he was uh, um, poisoned while he was president. They tested his body for arsenic. Do you all remember that the situation? That was like 30 or so years ago. Another president that's very well connected to Louisville is uh, Abraham Lincoln. Here are some of the, uh, his bio information. I'll help this person. There we go. So there is uh, Abraham Lincoln's uh, information there. Uh, he was, uh, he really was not that well uh, known for his political uh, campaigns. He only was a uh, U.S. representative uh, for a couple of years. He was, uh, he did the like Henry Clay and uh, Zachary Taylor. And he was very fortunate to become president back in the uh, uh, early 1860s. As you can see, he was six feet four inches tall. He was one inch taller than I am. Big man. Yeah. Uh, this is what, uh, let me stand away over here. Uh, this is what Louisville looked like back in 1841 when uh, Abraham Lincoln came here. He came here in the late July, early August of 1841 when the, uh, the courts in Illinois were taking a uh, break. He had three weeks to, uh, to come to Louisville and visit with his friend Joshua Fry Speed at Farmington. Here's what the city looked like, the skyline of Louisville when Lincoln was here in 1841. A lot of low-level buildings, one-story, two-story, three-story buildings, not very big. Here are some of the sites that Lincoln would have seen when he came here in 1841, which are still here. So these are buildings that we can see today that Lincoln saw some, uh, what is 181 years ago, whenever he was here in 1841. We start off with the, what we call now Actors Theater there. Uh, that was actually the Bank of Louisville. It was a bank building back in 1841. Lincoln might have actually have gone in there to do a financial transaction. The Cave Hill Farm, uh, that is now Cave Hill Cemetery. Uh, Farmington, where he stayed. Uh, the Bray House, which is a neighbor to Farmington. He, he, he was noted to go around and visit the neighbors, and so he more than likely went to the Bray House. Hayfield, also near Farmington, he possibly visited. Some buildings in downtown Louisville that are still there. The Old House, uh, Howard Hardy House. Christ Church Cathedral, it was built in 1822, so uh, Lincoln possibly could have gone to a uh, church there if he so desired. So anyways, we still have some remnants of buildings that Lincoln more than likely saw when he was here. Of course, Farmington is where he stayed at. We understand he stayed perhaps in this front room here. They had a bed set up for him there. And here are some friends of uh, uh, Lincoln's that he would have met with. Uh, Joshua Fry Speed was his good friend that he knew from Springfield, Illinois. Robert Anderson was at Soldier's Retreat, and he was a uh, Union Army uh, soldier. James Speed, who was the brother of Joshua Speed, James Speed became the Attorney General under Lincoln. And then James Guthrie, very well-known Louisvillian Guthrie, um, Lincoln wanted him at, in his cabinet. But uh, Guthrie said he's a little bit too old and declined. Uh, Guthrie, by the way, at that time was about mid 60s, and I don't think that impacts the politicians today. If you know. <laughs> so, just a little political commentary there. Yeah, he, he was too old. He said when he was in his mid 60s. Uh, um, here is Lincoln um, when he came here in 1841. 
Uh, he was 32 years old, and he was saying that uh, his courtship of uh, Mary Todd uh, was not going very well. He felt like uh, it wasn't happening, and uh, she didn't like him, and they had sort of not a good relationship at that time. So that's a quote of Lincoln. And then here's a quote of Mary Todd. She was, uh, what, uh, nine years the junior of Lincoln, and she thought the same thing, that she thought that Lincoln didn't like her very well. So they had two opposing views of each other. But fortunately, they uh, became amicably resolved, uh, and, and I think they got married in 1842. So um, anyways, it's kind of curious to see their, their relationships there. He was a very nice-looking man at that age. Yeah, he did not have his beard, did he, at that time? Yeah. And so here are some uh, statues that we have on Lincoln today in Louisville. Of course, the one on right by Ed Hamilton, which is down on the waterfront. And then the one over on the left there is the one down by the library downtown. And our new bridge that we built uh, a few years ago, we called it the Lincoln Bridge. Now, one thing that a lot of Louisvillians aren't aware of is that Abraham Lincoln's grandfather uh, lived out in Middletown, Kentucky, just out Shelbyville Road. And, uh, what, he was about 38 years old. Let's see if I get the dates right here. Or 48. He was 48 years old when, when he died. He was, him and his family were, uh, uh, him and his three sons were planting corn in a field one day when they were attacked by Native Americans, by Indians. And uh, the father, Link, uh, Abraham Lincoln, the father, was killed at, during that attack. But the three sons lived. One of them was Thomas Lincoln, who would later become Abraham Lincoln's father. So Abraham Lincoln, the president, was named for his grandfather, Abraham Lincoln, who was killed here outside Middletown, uh, Kentucky, and buried at Long Run Cemetery just out Shelbyville Road. So a lot of Louisvillians aren't aware of that connection with Lincoln. Well, uh, once that Indian attack happened, the family moved to Hodgenville, and that's where Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln, the grandson, was ultimately born there in Hodgenville. Um, now then, uh, uh, anger towards presidents just haven't happened previously. They've been going on a long time. Here in uh, 1841, they, they burned the uh, effigy of John Tyler, the president, in downtown Louisville. The, the Louisvillians were so upset, I'm not sure why they were upset with him over some sort of political uh, deal, but that we burned him in effigy. Now, Tyler did not come here to Louisville. He never visited the city, but we did burn his effigy here in, in the city. Um, James Buchanan, he did not come to Louisville, he never visited Louisville, but we have the only memorial or monument to James Buchanan in the whole United States here in Louisville. Wow. And the reason for that is the high Hydeville facade, which is there at Frankfurt and River Road, has a bust of uh, James Buchanan there at the top. And um, so that, to our knowledge, is the only statue to James Buchanan. Uh, Christian Heigold, who created, who built uh, the house, there you see it there in the upper left hand corner, it was in the old Point neighborhood, which has long been demolished, it was next to uh, Butcher Town along the Ohio River. But anyways, Christian Heigold was a German immigrant. He had come from Germany, and uh, so to show his patriotism, he built this house with a lot of patriotic uh, symbol symbolisms on it. And here, this is my graphic. I point out all the symbolisms there. One of them was James Buchanan at the top. And he talked about George Washington and 13 stars for the 13 colonies and all that. And the reason why Christian Heigl did this was back in the 1850s, there was a lot of anti-immigrant things going on. Uh, the Native uh, Americans did not like all these immigrants coming into the country. 
And thank goodness we've gotten over that in the last 170 years. <laughs> we no longer have that situation happening today. But anyways, Christian Heigl, a uh, German immigrant, showing his patriotism. Uh, this is what Louisville looked like in 1859 with the wharf area. By the way, this is Beargrass Creek emptying into the Ohio River, and this is 3rd Street right here. Back in the 1850s, they rerouted Beargrass Creek uh, farther to the east so that it did not empty uh, into downtown. Here's what Louisville looked like in the 1870s. As you can see, we're spreading out, getting bigger. We've got railroads now going across the Ohio. Uh, we had a president, uh, now, uh, U.S. Grant, uh, he visited Louisville a lot during the Civil War. Him being a general, he was uh, coming here at various times to check on the troops or passing through town. Uh, he did not come here while he was president, but he was here during the Civil War, and he came after the Civil War and after his presidency to Louisville also. Chester Arthur probably had the biggest celebration when he was here in Louisville on August 1st, 1883. He opened the Southern Exposition, which was sort of like a World's Fair that was based here in Louisville. That's what it looked like. They built this huge building, had a lot of exhibits, agricultural exhibits, art exhibits, a lot of different manufacturing related things. But Chester, Chester Arthur came here to open it up. This is what Louisville looked like in 1889. Again, it's getting a lot bigger of a city. This is William Howard Taft in 1911 when he came here to Louisville. I think this photograph was taken on the steps of the city hall down at uh, 6th and Jefferson. And one person that I want to point out is Henry Watterson standing right behind Taft. Um, Watterson claimed that he had met every president from John Quincy Adams to FDR, a total of 26 presidents. I'll let you all determine with a grain of salt whether or not he actually did that. But of course, Watterson, we still remember him today by the name of our expressway, the Watterson Expressway. One other interesting thing, whenever you see an image of Watterson, he's always looking to his right. And the reason for that is his right eye had some sort of deformity to it, and he never liked to be photographed straight on. He always was turning. So that's why, when you look at this photograph, everyone else is looking at the camera, and he's looking down the street. Some interesting things about Warderson. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt was here on April the 5th, 1905. Hubert Hoover was here on October 23, 1929, along with his first lady, Lou Hoover. When I saw the name Lou, I'm like going, shouldn't that be Louise or some other extended name? But every uh, bio that I read on her had Lou, L-O-U, so I think that's just the way she wanted it. Um, and um, Hoover was here to dedicate the uh, Louisville Municipal Bridge. We now call it the Clark Memorial Bridge, or us Louisvillians call it the Second Street Bridge. And I think this was Hoover's last best day of being a U.S. president. Because you know what happened just a few days after that date? We had the stock market crash and the, the depression began. So Hoover was in his, all of his glory on this day, and then just a few days later, all heck broke loose. He spoke also down at the uh, Memorial Auditorium earlier in May 30th, 1929. Woodrow Wilson was here in 1916. Uh, FDR was here on a number of occasions. One was 1932. You can see he's waving a hat there. Here he came by train. I'm not sure who this is with him. It's definitely not Eleanor, although Eleanor looks like she's over his shoulder in the back of the train there. Uh, here is... Uh, FDR there on the left, Happy Chandler, who I think he was governor at some point. I'm not sure if he was governor at this time, probably was. And it says uh, Alvin Barkley was vice president, but Barkley was actually pre uh, VP under uh, Harry S. Truman, who we'll discuss here in a few minutes. 
<laughs> Here's Eleanor Roosevelt when she visited the little Lou house in the 1940s. Lou Tate, who was a, the noted textile weaver there at the little Loom house. She's pretty well known nationally. Um, here is Harry S. Truman, and uh, you can see he stayed in, he was here in 1948, stayed at the Silbach Hotel. This is what Louisville looked like in the 1950s. Also at Long Run Cemetery, I mentioned about Abraham Lincoln's grandfather being buried at this cemetery. Well, Harry Truman also has relatives buried there. His maternal grandmother is buried there along with other uh, family members. So Harry Truman had a direct connection here family-wise to the Louisville area. John F. Kennedy was here on several occasions. He campaigned here. He was here in 1962. Uh, this is the Silbach Hotel behind him there. It says Sheraton, but it was the Silbach as well. <laughs> he attended church here at St. Mary Magdalene Catholic Church on Burke Street at Jacob. There you see Kennedy going through the crowd there. And that church has since been closed. It's now owned by the city of Louisville. But the pew that uh, JFK sat in was saved, and it's now uh, maintained by the Ar Archdiocese of Louisville in your archives collection. So they did save the pew that Kennedy sat in. And then unfortunately, so shortly after his death, we completed the I-65 bridge and we named it for him, Kennedy Bridge. You can see the flag here at half staff just a few weeks after his death. There's the Kennedy Bridge. Louisville in 1963. Looks like we have a lot of surface parking lots there, don't we? <laughs> there it is also, another view of it. With the Bell of Louisville, we just got the Bell of Louisville there about that time. Uh, Kennedy uh, arrived at Stanford Field. It's now known as Muhammad Ali International, but th this is what the uh, airport looked like 60 some odd years ago. And I vaguely remember going out there to see Kennedy, and I was kind of uncertain about this. So a few years ago, I emailed my mother and said, Hey, did we go out to see Kennedy at the airport? I seem to recall that. I was only six years old at the time. And my mother responded, yes. Uh, she said he wore a brown suit, and my mother wore a red sweater, so he would notice her at the <laughs> airport. But uh, yeah, I, did, I, so I actually saw Kennedy when he came here in 62. Some more views of uh, what the airport once looked like. Doesn't look like that today. Travel has really changed a lot, and I don't think it's for the better either. <clears throat> With these airplanes, we were just on a plane, and it was packed with people. The airlines are packed. Air, it's just not fun anymore. Here's Muhammad Ali International as it is today. Wow. It's really expanded. <laughs> and uh, here's what Air Force One once looked like when Roosevelt had it. And then this was Air Force One when Kennedy up to Nixon flew on it. And this is what Air Force One was when Carter to Reagan flew on it. And this is actually the Air, uh, Air Force One at the Reagan Library. Me and my wife were actually there back you know, on February the 18th, just what, 10 or so years ago we were there. We got to tour the uh, Air Force One. And uh, if you notice the date there, February the 18th, when we drove up to Reagan Library, there were all these press and all these people there. We're like, like, it was a Monday. We're like, going, why on earth are all these people here on February 8th on Monday? Turned out it was President's Day. They had a huge event going on there that day. Fortunately, it was open. We were able to go through it. But uh, it was kind of fun to be there on President's Day. It was totally unplanned. We had no idea. That. So here is our Air Force One today. Uh, Bush 41, the Biden 46, that's what they fly on. And there's going to be a new Air Force One. They're currently testing it. Here's what it looks like. Mm. Notice how big this wow. upper deck has gotten. Now, that's going to be where the president, whoever's in 47, I won't speculate who that might be. 
but uh, that's this is the president's plane uh, when they did it. And of course, some of you may know that Kennedy was responsible for this color scheme. He helped design the uh, the appearance of this. But anyways, that's the new one, and it should be operational by the end of this year, I think. But they're testing it as we speak. Uh, Lyndon Johnson was here on several occasions, 1964. That's what Louisville looked like in 68. Nixon was here in his classic pose. <laughs> um, now this was Nixon in 1968 when he was here. Notice he's actually riding on a limousine, limousine exposed, you know. I would have thought after Kennedy's situation, yeah. they notice the Secret Service agent. He's very nervous about this. <laughs> I cannot believe that they did that. I don't either. Uh, Nixon was down at the uh, uh, Bell Louisville. He was at the Derby a lot. That's Louisville in 71, <coughs> 73. Um, Gerald, yes, you have a the question. back when the back back building there. What Which one? is that? The eight hundred building. Uh, back. boy, it sure does look like it, but I can't believe that it would be. I think you went back one or two there. Yeah, that definitely is the eight hundred. Yes, <laughs> that's the eight hundred. So it oh, was built. Lord, in, I worked there. It was built in nineteen sixty three. Uh, Gerald Ford. Loved coming to the Derby so much so he was there for 13 visits. Yeah. Here he is with the governor at the time, John Y. Brown and Phyllis George. And look who's right there next to him, Muhammad Ali. Ah. <coughs> the Derby visit uh, by Jimmy Carter. Carter campaigned here in 76 and came back after his presidency uh, for the Derby. Only one 1979. Uh, more, um, you know, so this is Ronald Reagan. Reagan came to the Derby in 69. Here he is with Nixon <coughs> and, and all. Pat Nixon. Of course, Reagan was really here in 1984 for the debate in October of 1984, October 7th. Uh, Reagan debated uh, Walter Mondale for the presidency. This is Reagan at the uh, downtown Hyatt with all the balloons and banners. Nancy Reagan there along with him. It was down at the Kentucky Center for the Arts. Uh, George H.W. Bush was here on various occasions. Uh, also at the Derby. Bill Clinton also came uh, to Louisville several times. Stayed at the Silbach Hotel. Um, the Derby visit of uh, George W. Bush. Here he is uh, next to the Twin Spires at Churchill Downs. Uh, he campaigned here at the Louisville Slugger Museum in 2000, and me and my wife went down to see him. It was a large crowd, but we did get to see and hear him uh, talk. So that was kind of neat to actually see a president. Uh, Barack Obama was here on several occasions also. Uh, I just was in uh, Hawaii, in Honolulu, and got to go see Barack Obama's boyhood home. He grew up in Hawaii. And so while we were there, I said, hey, let's go by and see where he grew up. And we were able to do that. We always give the, uh, the presidents uh, Louisville sluggers when they come here. And this is the one to uh, Barack Obama. There's Obama uh, coming here. Uh, Trump has been here as well. Spoke down at the golf house. Uh, he went to the 2022 Derby. Now Biden has yet to be here in his official capacity as president, but he was here several times as vice president. Here he is holding a Louisville Slugger and you notice it's very close to Mitch McConnell right there, so I'm sure, they, I'm sure they don't get quite get along nowadays as they did back in those days. So here is a list of the uh, Derby visits by the various presidents from Truman down to Trump. 
some more derby history here of some of the presidents that came here. Uh, the derby actually is connected to Thomas Jefferson and how it began. So Thomas Jefferson uh, was good friends with George Rogers Clark and uh, George Rogers Clark's brother, uh, William Clark and Meriwether Lewis did the uh, uh, Northwest Expedition, the Lewis and Clark Expedition. So when William Clark had a son, he named him Meriwether Lewis Clark Sr. in honor of his expedition partner. And then when Meriwether Lewis Clark Sr. had a son, he named him Meriwether Lewis Clark Jr. Meriwether Lewis Clark Jr. started the Louisville Jockey Club, which is now known as Churchill Downs. So all of this can be traced right back to Thomas Jefferson. If Jefferson hadn't done all that, we would not have maybe the Kentucky Derby. Who knows? But that's how it all began. A lot of presidents stayed at the Silbach. There it is. Some images of the Silbach. Louisville's Grand Hotel. It's what the lobby once looked like, kind of dated appearance. Here is the list of presidents who stayed at the Silbach. I think presidents don't stay overnight very much anymore, especially in cities like Louisville. They'll fly in uh, in the morning and fly out that afternoon. Some stayed at the Brown Hotel, Hoover and Eisenhower. Um, Grant stayed at the old Galt, the first Galt House. Uh, several presidents stayed at the old Louisville Hotel. It was down on West Main Street, and it was right here where that modern building is. That's where the uh, Louisville Hotel once was, right there. What's there now? It's now just an office building that's there. I'm not sure when the old Louisville Hotel was uh, demolished. I think it was back in probably urban New York, probably back in the 1950s. They tore it down, and then they built this new building in the 1990s. Uh, other presidents who stayed at the various other golf houses, we've had a total of three golf houses in our history. Uh, presidents who came here via riverboat, listed them there, Monroe, Jackson, Lincoln, Grant, Taylor, and then they started coming by railroad after that. They all came through the uh, Portland Canal. Several of them spoke out the uh, Louisville Armory, which we now know as Louisville Gardens. There's the old, that's what Louisville Gardens once looked like when it was the Armory. A number of presidents spoke down at the uh, courthouse on the steps. I like what Andrew Johnson said back on September 11, 1866. He said, I come bearing the flag of our country containing 36, not 25, states. And by that he meant he, the Union was back together again, so instead of being separate, we are now full 36 states. The Civil War was over. So all the other presidents who spoke on the uh, courthouse steps. Both Lincoln and Nixon had a big debate over the Thomas Jefferson statue, uh, which is in front of the courthouse. Nixon, when he was here, claimed that the Republican Party was the party of Jefferson, but Kennedy had nothing of it. Kennedy was saying, uh-uh, Jefferson was a Democrat, and uh, we, we claim Jefferson, is what Kennedy was saying. So Kennedy and Nixon fought over who owned the Jefferson statue there. A number of presidents spoke down at our convention center, last being Barack Obama there. Other heads of states have been here. Mikhail Gorbachev was here, Queen Elizabeth, and then former King of England, King Edward, was here. We have a lot of streets named for presidents here in Louisville. Washington Street, Adams, Jefferson, Madison, Monroe, Jackson, Taylor, and Buchanan. Some, president, some Kentuckians who might have been president Henry Clay ran for president a number of occasions, and some of his family is buried at Cape Hill Cemetery. Alvin Barkley was president, a vice president with Harry Truman, and uh, if something had happened to Harry Truman, Alvin would have been president. 
some other Kentuckians who ran for um, uh, president, last being Rand Paul there in 2016, he ran for president. I'm glad Larry Flint didn't get it. <laughs> That's a little weird. Um, and so of the 46 presidents, 30 of them, in these red boxes here, have visited Louisville, or connected to Louisville in some manner. Now, I think these are all vi visited, yeah, because James Buchanan, even though we have a memorial to him, he did not visit here. So 30 of the 46, pretty, that's a lot of presidents when you think about it. Two-thirds of them have been to Louisville. And I really think, with all of our presidential history, we should have a presidential museum or display of, or some manner to recognize these presidents who have had an impact not only on Louisville, but nationally as well. Again, Zachary Taylor has had a major impact due to our immigration policies and what he did in his military career. Of course, Abraham Lincoln, when he came to Louisville, slavery really impacted him. He saw it on a first-hand basis and said, I've got to do something about this. And so that really impacted his presidency. And then Thomas Jefferson uh, with the uh, Northwest Expedition, uh, Lewis and Clark, really, really, uh, you know, the Western, westward expansion of the country. So we've really had a major national influence here in Louisville by these three presidents very much connected here and what they did here. This is what the city now looks like. Probably it's looks like that today. We have a very nice day out there today. So has anyone actually seen a president here? Have you seen one? Yes. Well, Kennedy, he came to our high school. Oh, wow. So that was that in 62? This is when he was right up. Uh, it was 1960. Yeah. Was it 60 when he was campaigning or 62 when he, he was, was president? Was... Which high school was it? Sacred Heart. Oh, Sacred Heart, okay. Yeah, you know, being Catholic, of course. Why not? <laughs> I just can remember seeing him in the sidewalk going to our gymnasium. Oh, he had a brown suit on, I remember. Well, well it may have been 62. <laughs> Could have been 62. And I, I, did you I, I, say you saw that? One? I saw one of the bushes, and for the life of me, I have to come up with which one I saw. But you saw a bush, right? So yeah. either way, it's close he, enough. He was... I think in Memorial Auditorium. Hmm. Yeah, Maybe. it may have been uh, the senior Bush, perhaps. Huh? It may have been the older Bush, H.W. Uh, uh, Bush, maybe. Could be. Uh, we were, anyone else see a president? So I've seen three, actually. I've seen Kennedy, uh, Clinton, and, um, who was the other one? And uh, Bush, Bush the younger, George W. So on Clinton, here's how we saw Clinton. So. Back in the mid-90s, uh, I took, took my family, my two little girls, daughters at the time. Uh, we were in Washington, D.C., just kind of looking at things. And we go to cross a street in Washington, D.C., and all of a sudden a motorcycle slams in front of us and stops us from crossing the street. We're literally getting ready to walk across the street. motorcycle comes screeching up in front of us and stops. We're like, whoa, what's up with that? Next thing we know, this big motorcade comes flying down Pennsylvania Avenue. And there goes the one with Clinton inside. We saw him plain as day as he was sitting in the back of that limo as he went down. So me and the kids, we all got a big thrill out of that to actually see a president in Washington, D.C. You don't normally get to do that. On another occasion, back in the mid-1960s, we were at the, my dad took us to the White House for a visit. And uh, Lyndon Johnson was president at the time. And some of you may remember, he had little beagles as dogs that day. And we saw him running around the grounds of the, of the White House that day. We said, oh, look at the dogs. There's Lyndon Johnson's dogs running around. Well, that night, we go back to the hotel, turn on the TV, and one of them had gotten killed that day by a Secret Service car and ran over with one of the dogs that was running around the grounds that day. So uh, that was another connection, perhaps, to one of the presidents when we were up there. But anyways, it's always a thrill when you get to see one of the presidents. As noted, Biden has yet to be here. He might be here. He might be here. In that. Who knows when Biden might come here or whoever is the 47th president. But uh, anyways, it's always a big thrill. Any other comments on presidents? Well, I didn't, I didn't see Bush here, 
but I saw a bush in Houston. Oh, okay. Uh, senior, and I was all excited, and I embarrassed my daughter to death. <laughs> Mother, it was it was her husband's graduation from the University of Houston, and he was speaking, and oh, I yeah. was I was thrilled to see him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he, he was the president. Yeah, he, he was the president. president then. I'm a big, I like going to presidential sites. As noted earlier, I've been to Obama's boyhood home there in Honolulu. But I've been to a number of uh, presidential sites, burial sites, like Lincoln in Springfield or Reagan in Simi Valley, California. I've uh, been to a number of, we just re were, a year ago, right, just a year ago, we were in uh, Plains, Georgia, uh, visiting uh, Carter's boyhood home. And, uh, and all. so I like going about doing that sort of thing. It's, Pretty interesting to see how they came up. Well, anyways, I thank y'all very much for this. I, I hope think I just.